Our next, the third and last uh, special event is called complementary events. Now, before I define complementary events for you, let's quickly look at a problem again where two events are, of course, complementary. We have a sample space with the outcomes, that's when we roll a die, with outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Event A is getting an even number, event B is getting an odd number. So if we draw a Venn diagram to represent this situation, then you first of all, without writing down all the specific outcomes, you will agree with me that even numbers and odd numbers, there are no outcomes in both. There's nothing in common. So therefore, the two events will not have that part that represents the outcomes that is in both. The even numbers are the numbers 2, 4, and 6 from my sample space of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The odd numbers from the sample space, of course, is 1, 3, and 5. Are there any outcomes missing? Let's have a look. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these two events exhaust the term that we used earlier, or used all the outcomes. So as you now will notice that there's, there are no outcomes outside. So that means these two events are exhaustive. But secondly, there is nothing in common. That means they're mutually exclusive. And now we get to the definition of when will two events be complementary? First of all, when they are mutually exclusive. And now, please think with me. What did we say? What was special about mutually exclusive events? The probability of A and B is equal to zero because there is no and. Secondly, for events to be complementary, they must be exhaustive. And what was special about exhaustive events? The probability of A or B was equal to 1. Remember, we said that for exhaustive events, that the OR is nothing outside. So the OR is the same as the sample space. And the probability of the sample space, you must always remember, is always 1. Because that, that represents all the outcomes. So the probability of the sample space is 1. And the OR is then the same as the sample space. So that probability, of course, is equal to 1. So always very important to remember, whenever you attempt a problem, and the problems say that the events are mutually exclusive, you must remember that the P of A and B will be 0. When the problems say that the events are exhaustive, the P of A or B is equal to 1. Now, if we go to our inclusive principle that we spoke about in the beginning, that the P of A or B is equal to the P of A plus the P of B minus the P of the AND. Please remember that this rule is always true. If the events are inclusive, exclusive, exhaustive, complementary, it doesn't matter. This rule is true. But because there are special events, now there are certain things that will happen to this rule. Like we said before, mutually exclusive and become zero. 
exhaustive, the all becomes one. And complementary, it is both. All becomes one and becomes zero. And now, I think you will be able to tell me what you will get from this. And that is that the P of A plus the P of B is equal to 1. Please, it's not a new rule. It is the same inclusive principle with special conditions, namely complementary events. The and is zero. The or is one because they're exhaustive. And therefore, the P of A plus the P of B is equal to 1.